Hey everybody, this is Brian from p and Homesteading. Wanted to do a little yard walk here and show you the lower yard in uh, the backyard here on the urban homestead. Our neighbors have some company over there, so I don't want to go and walk around and do the higher, higher yard today, or the upper yard, because they'll probably think I'm peeping Tom, snooping in their yards. But uh, this weekend, I actually went and foliar fed all of the fruit trees, just to give them a little boost, and uh, sprayed a little neem oil on there just to make sure that there's no fungal diseases getting on these uh, the apples. Let me show you the apple tree over here, this gala. There's a lot of fruit on this one this year. And look at all these apples. Look at the size of that guy already. And this is gonna be great. I mean, last year we had three, three or four apples on this tree, but uh, you can just see it's loaded this year with apples. So we're really looking forward to having this for the dehydration. And then we got uh, a couple of pears on this one. This is the first year that this pear has actually had any fruit set. There's only like three on here. And then we got our peas. They're starting to uh, flower, which seems later than normal because I remember we were having peas by June last year. So it's a little bit later because I think we had a little few cold spells that kept them from flowering too quickly. And here's some of our squash. Looks like it's doing pretty well after the, uh, the transplant from indoors. You can see these are getting, these are the ones that were kind of small last week. They're starting to put growth into their leaves. And there's eggplants back there. A couple of tomatoes. I think these are the pink boar. They're looking healthy. A lot of fruit sets starting to happen on some of the tomatoes back here that are budding. I think there was some more. Here's some rye. And I've got here, I'll leave this to go, just so I can feed the birds a little something. Let them fly in. Columnar apples really starting to show how many apples are on this thing. I mean, you can just see the thing's loaded. The other one doesn't have any fruit set though. So, then there's some down here. There's some more back here. You can see there's a lot. There's gonna be a, quite a bit here. Hopefully this, uh, tree is sturdy enough now at this point it's a three-year-old since we put it in and that's pretty much its full height so hopefully we'll uh won't have to stake this guy got some more tomatoes over here back there you can see our spaghetti squash is starting to vine up the trellis squash down here lots of little parasitic wasps love seeing those guys you see those? You're killing off your caterpillars. Turning them into zombies. In case you don't know, they lay, they basically sting and lay their eggs into the caterpillar's body. And as the caterpillar's crawling along, the, the eggs hatch inside there and they eat it from the inside out. Which is a more than justified way to uh, get rid of those little suckers. Although, I don't you know, really recommend cannibalism. <laughs> There's a little tomato down there, and there's a little uh, rock wall to keep the dogs away. There's no pears on that tree. It didn't flower this year, so it's still pretty young. But there's, uh, there's some apples on the, uh, the Fuji. I think that's a September Fuji, if I remember correctly. Let me show you a picture of the little apples. There. So excited to see all these uh, trees starting to finally develop fruit. There's some more back there by that birdhouse. I think our squash here, and our peas, and our beans down in there that are starting to come up through. I'm not too worried about the beans because these uh, beans that we put in for the, uh, the trellises on these and those up there are the scarlet runner beans. And they, uh, they're already, I mean, you know, relatively speaking, I don't know, you can get the perspective. They're about, you know, six inches tall in that angled box up there. Along the back, you can kind of see them right along where the trellises are, the bean hutches. So uh, they're doing really well. And I've been putting sluggo up there, so I prevented them from getting nipped off. Looks like we got a uh, pop-up, some kind of a squash or cuckoo bit, cuckoo bit. However you say that. <laughs> squash seem to be doing pretty well over here. 
That one was a little bit behind during the transplant. But you can see some new growth coming on, and it's looking pretty good. I'm happy to see that. A little more peas are blooming. And there's some apples on this. Is This is our uh, yellow, de what is it, yellow? What is it, yellow delicious? What is this guy? I never remember. I have to always look at my little map to see what these guys are. Let me see here. Oh, Golden Delicious. That's right, Golden Delicious. Gotta remember that. Yeah, so there's some apples on here. A couple down on there, hanging down. A couple more over there. I cut off the fruiting buds on this top piece here this year during my winter trimming because I wanted more growth to happen up here to get a little bit more stable because I was having to strap this to the post. I don't like to have to stake my apple trees too often because then it'll make them weak in that spot. And then they're more prone to break if they get loaded down with ice or uh, heavy rainfall when they're loaded with fruit. So I like to make sure they develop a nice hardy, you know, trunk. There's some more squash. You see back there, the tomato's doing really well. Seems to like it. Squash doing all pretty well. We've been eating off of our salmon berries. This is the first year they've actually produced. I should have left those on for you guys to see what they look like. There might be some more. I can find them down in there. Yeah, I guess these, you can see the yellow version of them. They're, so they'll be ripe this week. But Paul and I have been kind of battling on who gets to uh, claim them <laughs> for whoever's out doing walking the dogs or taking them outside. I think we cleaned off this bush. This tomato's doing really well. Two more of the uh, Montesino F1s. Yeah, there's some more of these salmon berries. I guess I'll have to make sure to sneak out here and get those. You can see the pears are forming nicely on this little pear tree. This is the only dwarf fruit tree we have in the yard. You can see it's got some nice looking little pears on there. Quite a few for being a little dwarf. I don't think we had that many last year on that guy looking good this is the new addition to the yard I took the uh, we went into a garden center this weekend and so let's see I'll talk about this first so this is our new little windmill I have a affinity for uh, windmills I've always loved them ever since I was a kid I always wanted one on my farm since I don't have a farm yet we went and picked up a little windmill so Kind of a nice little addition to watch you know when the wind blows it kind of spins around it's got a ball bearing on there on the end i wanted to get one that had that so that way you know when it spins it's not going to be a squeaky annoying uh, turd see it'll you know move with the direction of the wind and it makes a nice little uh stand around this uh vining rose bush so i figure when it starts to flower out up here i'll kind of look a nice little decorative ensemble to our yard or accent <laughs> and these uh we had some russet potatoes that went to seed in the uh, garage so uh, i decided to go ahead and grab a couple of my uh fiber uh planting pots put those in there so there's about three potatoes in each one of those and then i uh put a whole load of worm compost on top so that's eggshells and a bunch of stuff on top there so i want to see how well those will do with that big nutrient dump right on top of them, you know, feeding them this summer. And I stuck them out of the way and we'll see if we get them to produce some potatoes. Anyway, back to this. So this trellis used to be where the uh, rose bush was over here. And it was kind of an annoying eyesore right there. So I figure the windmill is a much nicer accent. And I took this, turned it sideways, and down below here, I planted peas and Monte Cristo stringless pole beans and so we're going to grow those on here you know the peas will come up first and we'll let those go and then the beans will start coming up in between and then once the peas die off from the summer heat we'll have the uh, monte cristo beans growing on here and then as they grow we'll just kind of vine them back and forth down the uh, trellis along the top so it makes harvesting of the beans a lot easier so you're not having to dig through there and by having access on both sides of this, it's going to make harvest of these beans really nice. So Paul actually gave me a thumbs up on this one. <laughs> as, long as, as long as she's happy with all the, the stuff I've done to take over this yard, 
it makes it a win-win for me. Uh, let's see. Actually, I can go over here. Well, I'm not disturbing the neighbor, but I was excited to see this. This is our plum cot, and it's a it's going on its third year in the yard. And you can see there's some little plum cots on there. So it's a plum apricot. There's another one up there. And I think there's another couple on the other side, but, uh, you know, we were excited to see that this little guy is going to have uh, some fruit for us this year. And along with, you know, the, the Asian pear here, it's got a lot of its fruit starting to form. You can see that should be a nice load. Got one here, a couple more there, over there. Some more back in here. I do love this tree. These Asian pears are really good. And then I've got my ones that I uh, stratified from seed last year, or no, two years ago. Two years ago, I took the pears from this tree, broke them open and took the seeds out. I wanted to see if I can grow a new variant of a pear because of the other pears we have in the yard. It won't be specifically an Asian pear like this one. It's gonna be something of a new variety. And so I up-potted all those into bigger, you know, 10 and 20 gallon pots. I think those are 10 gallon. I'm pretty sure because I think the 20 gallons are the big fiber ones that I have. But I'm pretty sure those are 10 and 10 and 15. I'd say somewhere around in there. But uh, that'll should keep them going for this year. And of course up there we have the uh, sickly peach that I've been spraying with my uh, neem oil as well as compost tea to try to get rid of that fungal crap that's on there. Boy, I tell you, I regret not getting the uh, the anti-leaf curl version there's an oregon i think it's guys an oregon oregon peach they call it i should have got some of those when i got peaches because dealing with that fungal stuff is really a pain in the butt i mean honestly but you know what are you going to do if you want to have peaches and you want to live in a wet climate like here in the pacific northwest you got to deal with a little bit of that but i'll definitely get started on that earlier next year and this fall i'm going to be spraying those with my compost tea and neem oil and my dormant oil spray when they go dormant just so that way I can try to get a jump start on killing that off for next year. So, you can see Paula down there just wandering the yard. And then, oh, geez. <laughs> I still need to see that. <laughs> I came in here and reseeded some clover because the clover's been doing really well in all these other areas and the wildflowers over here and their germination. So, we're going to put clover down here since we've got the new overhead watering system I put in. So now we're going to get rid of this, you know, bark dust here and have more greenery. Had a nice fire pit this weekend. Our kids came over to visit. Here's the, uh, the basil trials that I was talking about when I was doing the indoor videos. So we've got lemon basil and sweet Thai basil mixed in, in that tray. We've got cinnamon basil in this tray. Over here, we got another cinnamon basil. I can't remember the other one. I think they were the purples. Oh, we got the Indian large leaf basil. And then we got the uh, rosy basil and the dark purple basil. And you'll remember those were the ones that we uh, we had in the videos in the indoor tent, the large tent, where I tried to transplant those and up pot them into the bigger trays, and they kind of fell all over and dumped on themselves. Well, we're going to try it again because <laughs> I want to I want to have some of that basil for our salads this summer, especially with all the tomatoes that we grow. And these little guys, you know, all these little little guys and gals on the Montesinos and the Matt's Wild Cherry Tomatoes. That's going to be really good to slice those up and make a nice uh, basil, tomato, a little bit of cheese, that fresh mozzarella Paula picks up, the organic. Let's see, what else did I do this weekend? Oh, the drip lines. Yeah, I went around and put on all the drip lines. So I put new drip lines in because I used to use the uh, drip lines that were made with the uh, soaker tube. And those things, they were really getting brittle. So I went ahead and put in the uh, six inch spacing, quarter inch, you know, drip lines. So I got that all set up on a timer. And I set this one to come on in the afternoons because I want to make sure that I give an afternoon dose of drip water to these plants. So that way it'll help them keep from getting so dried out during the day. Because I noticed that, you know, these squash plants in these boxes, especially those two boxes, they were really starting to get droopy in the afternoons. And I was having to come around and do some hand watering. But other than that, 
just miscellaneous stuff, spraying trees, planting some things, doing the drip lines. It's all good here in uh, the little urban homestead. All right, well, this has been Brian from TMB Homesteading. Talk to you guys again. Bye.